Today we're going to flash an Ender 3 with the newest version of Vanilla Marlin, including Power Loss Resume. On my original Ender 3, I already made a video showing you how to upgrade the firmware to a newer version of Marlin, in that case, TH3D's version. The reason you would do this is because the version that ships on the Ender 3 is somewhat old and doesn't include vital safety features such as thermal runaway protection. If you're planning to use a TH3D product such as an Easy ABL, then I still wholeheartedly recommend following that guide and using that version of the firmware. For my Ender 3 Pro, however, I'm going to be going with a BL Touch and therefore this is the best version to use. Now you still will need to burn a bootloader and I do have a previous video guide on that one as well. Just to show that it could be done in different ways, in this video I'm going to do it with a tiny AVR programmer. So this is a tiny AVR programmer and see on the end there, programmer output. I sold it on a six pin header, so I could make up a little loom to connect the programmer output to the ISP six pin header as found on most of our main boards. Here's the color coding here and here's what it looks like after it's done. I tested it on an old Uno to make sure everything would be correct. Now I raced over that very quickly because I have already made a whole video about that process. What I haven't covered however, is how to pull the electronics cover off the Ender 3 Pro. There are four screws that need to be undone, the one on the front right on the top, then you spin it upside down and the three screws on the bottom. Note that the one towards the back of the printer is the long one for when you're reassembling. After that we pull off the cover, being careful not to damage the fan wires, and then we connect our header as before and we can upload that bootloader and then after that we'll be ready to do our firmware. Now we're ready to prepare our version of Vanilla Marlin. Vanilla, of course, meaning the original and main branch of Marlin, not any sub-branches created for any other printers. As of the time of recording this, the newest version is 1.1.9. It's actually pretty simple to get these files ready to go. So here we are on the Marlin firmware site and we're going to download the latest release. And at the moment that is 1.1.9, but whatever is at the top here, future proofing will be the one that you wanna download. So I've unzipped the folder and renamed it Marlin119-Ender3 and I've put it in my Arduino sketch folder. If we come inside the Marlin folder, we're going to find all of the source files and very importantly, we're going to find a folder called Example Configurations. In here we have Creality and then we have Ender3. So if we open up and inspect the readme that comes with this, we can see that they've reverse engineered it from Creality values, and it takes the boot screen and custom status screen directly from Creality. It also tells us that we need to install the U8 glib to make the LCD functions work. So to use all of these pre-configured files, we're basically gonna take them all and then copy them, and then come back to our main Marlin folder and then paste. It's gonna ask if we wanna replace, and we do. And now when we open Marlin with the main.ino file, it should load those configuration files specific for the Ender 3. Now inside the source code, if we come to configuration.h, we can verify that this has worked by scrolling down and seeing that the author is set as this is Keith B and the model is Ender 3. That's the main firmware ready to go, but there's actually two more simple steps that we need to do before we can burn it to the board. We know we have a Sanguino based board in our Ender 3 and by default if we come to boards we won't be able to find that here. So we have one simple step to enable it. The link for this website will be in the description below but basically we scroll down and copy this line here. And now under the preferences in Marlin. So we have this line here called additional board manager URLs. I already have one in here because I've added AT Tiny support. So I'm going to come to the end, do a comma and then paste it in and hit OK. Now we're gonna to come to tools, board, board manager. Everything will update down here and then I should be able to type in the new one up the top to install it. There it is, we're gonna click on it and come to install. Now there's one other little thing that we know we need before we can compile and it's a library. So we're gonna come up to sketch, include library and then up the top we should have a library manager. We're gonna to come to the search, we're gonna type in the one from earlier, U8GLIB. And we have U8 Glib by Oliver. You can see mine is installed. If you haven't installed it, when you click on it, you'll see an install button like this. Do that and then you'll be ready to go. 
Now let's make sure under the tools that we have Sanguino and the board that we have selected is a 1284 at 16 megahertz. Apart from that, everything should be ready to compile. So let's hit the tick and see if it happens successfully. After a few minutes, you should have success like I do here, done compiling. And we can see that although the 1284P is a small chip, without any auto bed leveling or anything like that added, we're only using 94%. So there's a little bit of headroom for other features to be enabled. Hopefully you agree that really wasn't too hard and that means that we're ready to burn it to the actual printer. So just a reminder that you need to plug in a USB cable from your computer to the printer at this stage and to make sure you have the drivers installed for your printer as well. After that, you can select your COM port and hit that upload button and hopefully after a minute or so, it will say that it's uploaded with success. Of course, there's one more feature that the original firmware had that until now has been lacking and that's power loss resume. Here's how to enable it. So previously, one of the disadvantages of upgrading the firmware was losing the Creality Power Resume feature. But as of Marlin 119, this is now included. If we come to Configuration Advanced, and then you can go Control F and type in Loss, it will take you to this section here. And all you need to do is remove the comment here. You can ignore what's on the inside. And now when you flash the firmware to the printer, Power Loss Recovery will be enabled. Now it is pretty easy to get going, but I still found it somewhat unreliable. Firstly, you have to be printing from the SD card. Secondly, it's writing to that card constantly, which on paper at least is gonna shorten the life of the SD card. And thirdly, when it resumes, it doesn't necessarily go back to the exact same position. And worst of all, when the print resumes, there's a big blob there and the nozzle crashes into it and gave me layer skips that ruined the print anyway. It's to their own and it's up to each individual whether they wanna turn that feature on or off. Now before I flush the firmware, I connected via Octoprint with the terminal and I retrieved all of the factory values and compared them versus what was in the new firmware and fortunately everything matched. I've also done some test prints since then and everything worked exactly as you would expect, except now I have the benefit of thermal runaway protection, baby stepping and other new features which I'll cover in future videos. Hopefully you found this guide straightforward and easy to follow. I got heaps more coming up on the Ender 3. One of the next things I'll be doing is remaking my guide on the BL Touch, but this time with this vanilla version of the Marlin firmware. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.